Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a clip of plus-size influencer J-Bay making even more demands for special accommodations for the obese. We've covered this person several times on the channel before, and in the past, they've asked for an extra seat on airlines, wider hallways in hotel rooms, and bigger booths in restaurants. What sort of special accommodations are they asking for today? Stick around to find out. We're also going to be taking a look at a couple of bonus clips, including one where Jay Bay talks about a time when their fiance was fat shamed, and another one where somebody says fat phobia hurts us all, including the thin. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. Alright, she's going to be responding to this comment that reads, We pay for heavier luggage. When it comes to my plus size travel petition, people like to compare a person needing to buy additional plane seats to the concept of paying for overweight or additional luggage. But you need to understand something. Once you check your luggage, there is a human that has to handle that luggage and get it onto the plane. And did you also know that back injuries are very common for ramp agents at the airport? To lower that risk of back injury, strict standards have been set on how much that baggage can weigh. Are you really talking about people hurting their backs carrying oversized luggage? When recently you were complaining that somebody didn't push you up the ramp? And yeah, if you have to pay more for heavier luggage because it takes up more room in the cargo hold and it's harder to move, obviously you should pay more if you take up an additional seat. Also, let's be clear that luggage is an inanimate object and people are sentient individuals with the right to a certain level of decency, respect, and safety. So do we only care about the decency, respect, and safety of the plus-sized individual and not the person sitting next to them whose seat you are spilling into? So stop comparing people to luggage. A plus-sized individual or tall individual or someone needing more space on a plane is not the same as someone wanting to bring an extra Gucci suitcase. I agree. Somebody being tall and needing extra space is not the same as bringing a Gucci suitcase because they can't change their height. But you could not bring a Gucci suitcase or not be obese. Humans are not being carried by ramp agents who could potentially hurt their back. What? Dude, you just recently made a video complaining that the ramp agent didn't push you up the ramp and potentially hurt their back. What are you talking about? <laughs> now she's like, big luggage is actually hard to move because you guys have to move it. You don't have to move plus size individuals. We take care of ourselves. Even though in a video very recently, she was complaining that nobody pushed her up the ramp in the wheelchair. Is this all just rage bait, dude? I've asked that question before. And we deserve space on a plane to be comfortable and safe. So stop saying that if someone is taller or they weigh more, that they deserve to pay more for the same experience getting from- Nobody said that tall people deserve to pay more because your height is genetic and you can't change it. Point A to point B, because that's just not fair and it's not human decency. Well, I agree with the commenter that if you should have to pay more for oversized or extra luggage, that you should have to pay more if you take up extra space on the plane, if you're spilling into other people's seats. I love how they try to lump tall people in there, similarly to how they're always trying to lump themselves in with the disabled. They're always trying to lump themselves in with people whose condition is outside of their control. <laughs> Next. Have you or a loved one ever faced discrimination while traveling because of your size? Um, no, I'm not rich, so I don't spend my life traveling. Unfortunately, if you answered yes, it is an all too common experience for plus size travelers. By the way, how do you have money to constantly travel? I want to tell you a story about my loved one experiencing discrimination while traveling as a plus size person. My partner used to go on many trips that were required for business, and this one time, the company had paid for the travel expenses. However, the company only paid for one seat, and even though my fiance felt like one seat was adequate, they could have used extra space, of course. But if they wanted that extra space, they would have had to pay out of pocket, which was not an option at the time. <sighs> so they could fit into their seat, but they would have really liked an extra seat. But if they were to get an extra seat, they'd have to pay for it themselves? They would have had to pay for their own extra seat? Oh my gosh. And why are you telling this story to me with sad music playing in the background? That poor man. How did he pull through? He could fit into his own seat, but he really wanted an extra seat. But then he would have had to pay for it himself. Oh, what a predicament. You're really telling us this like it's a sob story and there's sad music playing in the background. Sadly, this is a common issue for plus size travelers. A, a common issue? You mean, if you would like an extra seat, you have to pay for it? 
That is a huge issue that we have to pay for the things that we use. What the hell? Especially when traveling for business. However, the story only gets worse from here. The day How could it possibly get worse? At the trip, my fiance boarded the plane and got settled into their seat. The passenger, who my fiance found out was the passenger who was supposed to sit next to them, boarded the flight, took one look up and down at my fiance, and gave them a look of disgust and disappointment. Okay. Did they say anything? Or do anything? So your fiancé got on the plane, and the person sitting next to them looked at them like this? Psh. How did he recover? Your fiancé, a grown man, got a dirty look from another human being? <gasps> What's he gonna do? Did you call the police? Did you file a police report? That's the first step. You probably should have pepper sprayed that person in self-defense. You would have been legally within your right. They made some insulting remarks about my fiance's weight right in front of them and then motioned for the flight attendant to come over immediately. This oh no, it just keeps getting worse. The passenger then proceeded to tell the flight attendant that they refused to sit next to my fiance and definitely insinuated that it was because of their size. Insinuated that it was because of their size. So they literally didn't even say that. <laughs> This story just keeps getting less and less traumatic as time goes on. Okay, so your fiancé was spilling into the seat next to them, obviously, and the person sitting there didn't care for it, and they called the flight attendant and insinuated that they would like to move because of this person's weight. So they literally didn't even say it. They didn't say, hey, move me because this moron is all up in my seat. They said, hey, can you move me because, uh little bit of situation going on over here they <laughs> insinuated not even that not even this like that's that's more direct than an insinuation an insinuation would be like hey maybe um it would be beneficial if i was in a seat and i wasn't being crushed to death um <laughs> they just keep beating around the bush to the flight attendant and won't just say it hey you think i could get moved to a seat where i could maybe like um breathe Hey, you think I could perhaps get some accommodations where I'm not, like, being all crushed to death um, by a random stranger and being all hot and sweaty and stuff? Hey, do you think perhaps I could get another seat where I'm not being prevented from occupying my entire space? Wait a minute. Is this because they think that I'm large? <gasps> what? You think I'm fat? Is that what all these insinuations are? How dare you. This behavior is unacceptable and hurtful and something many plus size passengers have experienced. Um, no, you spilling into my seat is unacceptable and physically hurtful. You're over here physically touching me and then complaining about the words that I said? You're joking. And my fiance thinks about this moment to this day. <laughs> Does he? Oh, you thinking about that time that that mean man called you out for spilling into his personal space? This kind of discrimination happens far too often to plus size travelers, and that's why I've decided to take action. I started a petition demanding that the FAA protect plus size travelers. Take action by demanding other people to do stuff once again. To ensure that we're never subjected to this kind of treatment ever again. Okay, so you're not joking. You don't want to be subjected to this kind of treatment again? What treatment? Your fiancé was spilling into somebody else's seat. The dude was like, hey, bro, what the hell? This ain't chill. He gave him a look of disgust, as he should, because you're spilling into his seat. And then he requested to be moved. I'm still waiting for the discrimination to happen. All I see is somebody getting butt hurt because they couldn't fit into their own seat. And trying to make it somebody else's fault or problem. It's funny because the story started off with them saying he didn't need an extra seat, but he would have really liked one. It would have really made him comfortable. And then by the end of the story, there's somebody sitting next to you giving you a dirty look and leaving, indicating to me that you did not fit into the seat and you should have bought that extra seat. If you want to join me in making a difference, please sign my petition. You can find the link in my bio or right here on the screen. Together, we can create change and make traveling a better experience for everyone, regardless of their size or abilities. For more we don't need to bring people with different abilities into this, the disabled or whatever. Accessible travel information, plus size travel tips, and advocacy. Make sure to hit that follow button right now. All right, so that was completely ridiculous and I disagree. I think it was hilarious that J-Bay said that her fiancé still thinks about that incident to this day. He pops up in the middle of the night. <sighs> that one guy gave me a dirty look that one time. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, stop. Come on, bro. Grow a pair. Jesus Christ. Next. All right, now she's going to be responding to this comment that says, Travel is for thin, beautiful people only, and not for fat, ugly people. Why is this so hard for some to understand? 
Okay, how much do you want to bet that that comment was left by one of Jay Bay's burner accounts? It doesn't seem like something that a real person would say. It's all like, how dare you plus-size women go out there and flaunt your freedom in front of the rest of us that are being held down by toxic beauty standards. How dare you be so free? Like, <laughs> stop. All right, there's music playing in the background. Okay, so here's a little montage of her going to all the places that I will never, ever see in my life because I am not super rich and I don't travel 24-7 like this person does for some reason. Not sure. They said, no, you're wrong. Travel is for everybody. It's weird. Usually, usually you work hard and make a bunch of money and then you go on vacation to take a break from all the hard work. I'm not sure how we get to just go on vacation without ever working hard. That's an interesting life hack. I gotta get on J-Bay's level, dude. You just get born into this world and immediately start going on vacations. <laughs> what? Travel is for everybody. Um, no, not the poor, homie. Us poor folks don't travel anywhere. See that? You're standing in front of the Hollywood sign. I lived in Southern California for a very, very long time. I grew up there for a very long time, and I saw that sign like once. <laughs> but I grew up poor, so we weren't constantly traveling and jet-setting across the planet and then complaining. Can you imagine traveling across the world all the time and having nothing but complaints? And I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't enjoy going and traveling and stuff. If you have this kind of life, you know, kudos to you. I'm happy for you. I don't want to just come off as somebody that's bitter because I've had to actually work during my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, let's talk about the places that I've traveled. I've traveled a lot within this country, but it was for work. I've talked about before when I was younger, I used to travel from coast to coast, moving furniture with my stepdad. So I've been to at least 40 of the lower 48 states. And I've also been to Canada. I went to Cultus Lake, British Columbia once when I was a kid with my grandparents and it was dope. Took an RV trip up there. The only travel that I've done for leisure was that trip up to Canada. All the other travel was for work. I find it very interesting that this person is able to make any sort of money online doing a travel vlog. That's an extremely saturated niche. Next. Fat phobia is bad for all women, not just fat women. And I think that's the thing that people don't get. Like, yes, obviously it's bad for fat women, but it's also bad for thin women. Even if you're currently winning the whatever beauty standard that we have, by subscribing to that, you are setting yourself up for failure because now you have put the threat in place that if you, if your body changes, your value will be lost. Okay, so by trying to conform to beauty standards, you are participating in fat phobia? By putting your value and your worth in your body shape and size, you are setting yourself up for failure. And Well, you don't have to put all of your worth into your body shape and size, but you can have some pride in it and take care of it. Even if you never fail, that threat will be hanging over you forever. Okay, so what I need to do is stop caring about beauty standards and done is that really a world you want to live in is that a world you want for your friends and your family is that a world you want for your daughters and your nieces like because men use it as a threat to make women feel bad about themselves they're like oh what if you gain weight how many times have you heard men use that what hey i didn't say anything man i was just sitting here men i'm hardly a man what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean you must not be talking about me I'm just a boy. I'm sorry. Can I stop being weird? No, I can't. It is so common because it's such a pop. And then it cut off abruptly right there. What the heck? Why are there so many TikToks that do that? You're in the middle of saying some highly controversial stuff and it just cuts off right in the middle. She's like, so basically what I'm saying is the one group of people that don't deserve to have any rights on this planet and should be locked up and pretty much enslaved are... And then, and then it just cuts off. <laughs> You're like... You left me hanging on the edge of my seat right there. Anyway, the point that she was trying to make is that fat phobia hurts all women, even thin women, because you're trying to conform to a toxic beauty standard, which I disagree with. I don't think it's fat phobic to try to conform to whatever type of beauty standard. I love how so many of these are basically just like, hey, stop caring about beauty standards. As if you don't have your own standards and you're not attracted to specific things yourself. 
I recommend we don't conform to toxic beauty standards, but instead try to work on becoming the better version of ourselves so that we might attract somebody who's working on becoming the best version of themselves. So what do you think of the clips that we just saw? Is it time to stop comparing fat people to luggage? Will Jay Bay's fiance ever recover from that fat shaming story? And does fat phobia hurt all women because it's trying to conform to a toxic beauty standard? Leave a comment below. Happy Thursday, everybody. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.